At the Sports History Network, we're proud to introduce you to a new sponsor for our podcasts. It's Home Field Apparel, your premium collegiate apparel brand right out of Indianapolis. They've got incredibly comfortable t-shirts, plus they're officially licensed with vintage college designs. They have over 150 plus colleges available now and always adding more. Homefield digs through the archives and history of your school to find unique logos, mascots, and moments to make thoughtful designs for your school. When you shop today, New customers can get a 15% discount off their first purchase using the promo code SPORTSHISTORY at checkout. You can learn more at homefieldapparel.com. Now it's time to take a sports break, a look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of the Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all good things in sports. And we're here for your sports break for September 21st. And we have a doozy here of talking about some of the greatest athletes and the greatest events on this date of September 21st. But before we get to those and their uniform numbers, let's remind you that we have a Twitter account. It is at Pigskin Dispatch. You can find us on there. Pigskin Sports is going to pop up on there. We post everything from the Sports Jersey Dispatch, from Pigskin Dispatch, and from our friends from around the world in the Twitter sphere. So make sure you join us there at Pigskin Dispatch. We'd love to have your follow, and we do follow back. Now, let's get to those uniform numbers we'll talk about today. And they're 17, 21, 7, number 20, number 10, 32, 37, 45, and number 31, September 21st, 1906. The New York Islanders first baseman, Hal Chase, had 22 putouts to tie a Major League Baseball record at the time in a 6-3 win over the Chicago White Sox at Southside Park. We have a really interesting photo of Hal Chase but he's, it's from 1914, and he's in a Chicago White Sox uniform, all black. Beautiful picture of him. But remember, in, this, in 1906, he was playing for the Highlanders against the White Sox. So it's kind of an interesting irony, but uh, appropriate all the same. You can find it at the jerseydispatch.com for the September 21st post. September 21st, 1934, St. Louis Cardinals pitching Dean Brothers, they shut out the Brooklyn Dodgers in a doubleheader. Dizzy Dean, number 17, in a 13 to nothing route in game one, and sibling Paul Dean, who wore number 21, presented a 3 nothing no hitter against those, those uh, Dodgers that he played. And the Dean Brothers would help the Cardinals claim the World Series that season with performances just like these. September 21st, 1956, the New York Yankees set a dubious Major League Baseball record, stranding 20 runners on base during their game. Uh, the Yankees number seven, Mickey Mantle, he hit a 500-foot-plus homer, though, but rival Boston Red Sox won the game 13-9 at Fenway Park. September 21st, 1969, the New York Jets. Steve O'Neill, number 20, punted a ball. Get this, 98 yards against the Denver Broncos. That's the length of the football field. For goodness gracious, that is quite a punt. September 21st, 1970, Oakland Athletics number 17, Vita Blue. He threw a no-hit gem against the Minnesota Twins, providing a 6 to nothing A's victory on that day. And September 21st, 1973, Nate Archibald, who wore number 10 that season of 73, signed a seven-year contract with the NBA's Kansas City Kings for four hundred. $50,000. Doesn't sound like a lot much in NBA contracts, but back then, that was a tremendous amount. And the man they called Tiny Archibald, he stood six foot tall, short on the courts, but a giant in basketball history. In September 21st, 1980, the Los Angeles Rams' Johnny Johnson, who wore number 20, scored on a 99-yard uh, touchdown interception. A pick six, 99 yards. That's pretty good. September 21st, 1981, Philadelphia Phillies left-hander Steve Carlton, number 32, struck out a National League record 3,118 when he sat down Andre Dawson, a very good hitter in his right of the Expos on that day. Uh, 
pretty pretty uh, tall order to strike out Andre Dawson to get your record on that one for Steve Carlton. September 21st, 1986, New Orleans Saints. Mel Gray, number 37. He returned a kickoff 101 yards for a touchdown. What's with these returns? A 99-yard interception, 101 yards for a touchdown. September 21st is a returner's dream, I guess. September 21st, 1986, back in the baseball world, San Diego Padre, Jimmy Jones, number 45. Well, he pitched a one-hitter in his major league debut. That's quite a way to start in the MLB. September 21st, 1997, Mike Piazza, number 31, became the second to hit a home run out of Dodger Stadium. Yeah, it's out side in the parking lot. September 21st, 1997, New York Yankees number 45, Cecil Fielder hit his 300th home run in Major League Baseball. That is what we have for your sports break. That's your history for the September 21st. Glad you could join us. Hope you join us each and every day as we have a podcast coming up on either Sports Jersey Dispatch, Pigskin, sometimes both, sometimes multiple, but most of all, we're here to have fun with you and preserving sports history. So until tomorrow, everybody, have a great sports history day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout, and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast. We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com. Not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. Get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. (laughs) Isn't it just? A poster-sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website, where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction, in multiple sizes and in several different materials, with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. (laughs) <laughs> Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delft discovered the spondiferous magic of row one sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can, too, by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R-O-W number one today for access to the full row one catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act today for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at Check out and keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer, coming soon. Oh,